Hello, everyone. Welcome to another episode of Storytime. I hope y'all are staying safe and healthy. I am so pumped for today's episode because it features one of our former Reno players, Eunice Budotti. He is amazing. I think I brag about him for half of the episode. Truly such a talented player, but an even better person. So I'm excited for y'all to hear it and enjoy. All right, y'all, welcome back. I am here with Eunice Budotti. Eunice, how are you? I'm doing great. Thanks. How about you? I am doing as well as I can. You, I know the season ended, but you're still in Reno. Why are you still here? Um, I mean, I'm from Belgium, so it's, it's, it's in Europe, the situation with COVID and everything, it's, it's pretty serious. They went back into a full lockdown um, and you can kind of still move around here in Reno. Um, so I figured I could just stay around for a couple more weeks and then find my way, um, find my way home. So that's where I'm going to be going in a couple of weeks. Excited though. It's been, it's been two years since I've been home. Oh, what have you been doing to stay busy over the last month or so? Um, I don't know. Uh, I think I kind of took some time off after season, um, you know, kind of decompress, relax, not doing too much. Um, and then just, I don't know, just relaxing, just nothing too much kind of planning, you know, kind of booking my flight, seeing what I'm going to take home, seeing what I'm going to leave here, uh, seeing some friends or some teammates right before they left. You know, there's some other guys that stayed around for a little longer. Um, so yeah, that's kind of where I'm, I've been staying busy. Nice. Well, one teammate that's still here, um, this episode's going to be a little delayed in the news, but Corey Herzog just had Mm -hmm. a baby boy. And I always think, I I was talking with Benji and he was saying some of the best things about this team were how close y'all were. So I think back to the gender reveal where all of you guys, when it was the blue chalk or whatever Uh it was, like I've never seen people that excited in my life yeah. over a gender reveal. So <laughs> how special was not only the gender reveal, but just the camaraderie that you guys had in the family that you guys became? I know it was a great team. I think we talked about it with some guys in the team. It felt like it felt like a college team, to be honest. You know, in college, you have that camaraderie and everyone's really close. Um, and I kind of felt when I would go to the pros, it would be different. But um, I mean, my first experience in a pro team, it was, it was great. You know, a lot of guys that, came out of college a couple of years ago and then the older guys like Corey he just still acted like a guy in college so you know he's he was a I think he was a great factor to bring a lot of guys together you know he was a he's a great friend a good leader um you know one of those leaders that in the locker room that when he talks you listen but um I think yeah, every, everyone was happy for him too you know he everyone knew he wanted a boy I think mm-hmm. I mean he'd be happy too if it was a girl obviously but uh yeah, I think I think everyone felt happy for Corey when uh, when we saw it was a boy. Love that, and he's definitely seemed like the team dad. Every morning I would walk in, he was there with his clipboard, bugging people if they. Yeah, like, that's exactly that's checks. exactly what it is. He's a team dad. That's I wasn't finding the word, but that's what he is. 100%. That's amazing. And for you, it's kind of different. I feel so old when it came to this year's team because I'm 27, and I feel like. Most of y'all were younger than me anyways, but mm-hmm. you're 24, correct? 24, yeah. So with it being your first real professional experience, um, technically kind of a rookie in a way, but you are older than some of the other rookies like Benji, DLC, mm-hmm. all of them. So did you have that real like rookie feel or did you feel like being kind of older that um, you, you didn't really have that? Yeah, not really, to be honest. Um, I don't know. I, I always look back and I said, um, you know, I left Belgium to go to college on a decent late time. You know, I was 20, 21 when I was a freshman in college. Um, mm-hmm. And when I look back, I don't know, I think I kind of missed like the mental aspect of the game to to make that step to the pros. Um, and I think those couple extra years in college uh, kind of helped me to mature. You know, I lived by myself away from away from home. So even though I was a rookie, I kind of felt like, you know, I was a little older than the other rookies. Um, but yeah, I always think everyone has their own path. You know, if I think maybe when I was 20, I wasn't ready for it, and now I, I was. So um, so yeah, those, those years in college kind of helped me to prepare for that, I think. Yeah, I love that you mentioned that too. Just for everybody listening, um, Eunice was one of the nicest, most polite players 
on the team. I remember I was yelling at one of my coworkers about something. We were doing field boards. I was cranky. Like y'all were walking up the stairs after a team photo. And I'm just like on one. And then all of a sudden you're like, good morning. And I was like snapped out of the bad mood. And I was like, that is something I appreciate. So um, I think it definitely is something that people notice. And um, so I've always appreciated that you really act like a pro with everybody. So thank you for that. Oh, thanks. That's one of the, you know, that's one of the best compliments you can get in my opinion. So I don't know if my parents will be watching this or maybe I'll send the link through to them. So I think they'll be happy to hear that for sure. Yes. Love it. So let's go ahead and talk about your time in Belgium. So you played, I had to write all this down because I had no idea, but you were actually on the Moroccan U17 and U20 team. How mm. exciting was that to represent uh, Morocco? It was great. I mean, um, I always had that roots with my dad being from Morocco and, you know, we visited Morocco once in a while with my family just as a vacation. Um, but that was kind of it with, in regards to my connection with the country. Um, and then it kind of came unexpected. Um, when I was 16, 17, we had a game, we had a teammate that was from Morocco and we had a scout coming for him because mm -hmm. I didn't have my Moroccan passport. I had the Moroccan so my dad was Moroccan, but I didn't, I wasn't officially a citizen or nationality of Morocco. Um, mm -hmm. So they saw my name, which is a very Moroccan name. And I had a good game that game. So they, they asked me if I was from Morocco and I said, yes, um, but I didn't have a passport. So they mm -hmm. basically did a, a quick process of getting my uh, passport, getting my citizenship and, you know, went pretty quickly and then everything kind of rolled into you know playing for the under 17s doing well there getting called up for the under 20s so um i don't know i think it was it was a good experience for myself i think my dad was proud too you know that i kind of played for where he came from um mm -hmm. so yeah overall it was it was a great experience you know you connect with players that play all over in europe and morocco kind of in the same situation as you but just playing in different places in europe so uh yeah it was fun love that and then in belgium when did you start playing soccer like what age and what made you fall in love with it to where you're like I want to go to college and play I want to try to build a career out of it I started playing really young uh, I think my brother my older brother was the first one in the family that ever played soccer uh, so I oh, think wow. if it wasn't for him I probably wouldn't be rolled into the sport but um, I always wanted to go play with my uh, brother to practice like a local club I was mm -hmm. too young though I was three years old so my mom was like no you're gonna wait a couple more years uh, but then when I was four years old, I think um, he finally took me to a training of his brother um, and kind of rolled into that and then got picked up by um, a bigger academy uh, in Bruges. Um, and at, at the time I was seven years old, you know, it was still like, I will see what happens, um, mm -hmm. you know, just have fun with it. Um, but then, you know, the years get by, the years get by. And then when I was 12, went to a boarding school. So I kind of got more serious every year. And like whenever you hit 15, 16, you kind of have an idea of hmm, maybe I can you know, make a living of this when I'm getting older, you know, maybe mm -hmm. this is my passion and this is what I want to do. But, um, you know, when you get older, uh, that's when it gets closer and you start to realize, okay, maybe I could do something with this. Um, and then college came around, came to, came to college. That was kind of a late, late second decision too. You know, it's always been decisions that's been made last minute. Um, I was 20 years old and I had a friend that played in college and he, contacted me and was like, yeah, I think you could, uh, you know, get a scholarship here and try it out here because I kind of was on the edge of, you know, signing a deal, not signing a deal. I didn't have a degree, so it's stressful. Um, <laughs> but that's kind of how I rolled into the, the college, the college game and came over and never really looked back and I'm still here. So it's a good sign, I guess. Yeah, you're doing something right. So yeah. you went to Boston College and then Creighton. So when you came in, I'm embarrassingly am not really knowledgeable about the different languages and all of that, but was yeah. it your first time really having to learn English or did you speak it growing up as well? Uh, everyone kind of speaks like very basic English in, in, in Europe, uh, but I definitely wasn't prepared too well to, to go to college. I still remember <laughs> my first essay. It was like an English, an English writing class. And I think we had to write like it was something stupid, like one one page or two page essay. And we never wrote essays back home and in a language that I don't really master. Yeah. So, uh, you know, I think it was two pages and I start writing and I get to a page and a half and I was just done. You know, I didn't have any words anymore. <laughs> I just didn't know what to write. So I put my head, you know, like the title 
I put it in like 35 or 40, like title, you know, just very big so I could get there. And my teacher called me in and he was like, you know, this is not how we do it here. You know, I was like, I'm sorry for my English. It's just not that good yet. So uh, he helped me through it. But it was, there's a couple of funny stories, you know, coming to college in a language that you don't really master that much. And there's also, so I have a lot of friends that speak Spanish from the Dominican, Venezuela, whatever. And I realized the hardest thing with them and teaching them English is like the sarcasm and just the way yeah. that Americans say things. I feel like it's really tough for people to like latch onto. So for you, I know you said you have a funny story, but is there one that you can talk about knowing your parents are listening to this episode? Is there one that you would like to share? Like just with the language of English or in general that yeah. I had through college? Yeah. Um, I don't know. Like I, I should go back to my freshman year, but that's four years ago, probably. <laughs> um, not sure, to be honest. Uh, I think that was like the one story that I always remembered in my freshman year, um, you know, my you English right. class. Yeah. Um, what did you write about? I don't know. It was, I think it was more like an introduction um, mm -hmm. of, you know, your first impressions at the school, mm -hmm. uh, what you've been doing in the first couple of days, what your goals were for the four years that you would do in college. Um, and at that point, I maybe decided to go to college in America three months earlier. So I, I just got off the plane, barely speaking English, no idea what major I would do. You know, I had no idea where to get around in school. So I didn't have that much to write about. Um, I just knew I would be playing soccer. Um, mm -hmm. But it overall, it was a great experience. I think I learned a lot, um, not, not just learning about, you know, the classes that you take, but just as a you know, human being. I think I grew a lot in the last four years through college. It was, you know, you meet a lot of people. Uh, you live by yourself, so you have to, you know, grow up quick. Um, but uh, yeah, it was fun. I would, yeah, if I could go back, I'd do it. But uh, yeah, I miss college once in a while. I occasionally miss college, but I'm getting to the point where, like, I went to ASU. So I was watching the football game a few weeks ago, and I graduated a semester early. So I was December 2014 instead of yeah, May 2015. I did the same thing. Yeah. For real? Yeah. Look at us, overachievers. <laughs> but I like, I'll watch the football games and I'm like, oh my God, I'm older than every single player by at least a few years. So like, it makes me just miss college. Like, were you in the dorms and stuff like that? Or were you in an apartment? I was in the dorms my first year and then I moved off campus my second year. Um, and then I transferred schools. Um, but then I stayed, it was, my second school was kind of like, you know, these senior apartments on campus. It was kind mm -hmm. of dorms, but not really. Um, yeah, but I lived off campus my, my second year. And I was always one of the older guys anyways. You know, I was 20, 21 in my freshman year. So yeah. I kind of got used to that feeling that you have now, maybe that, you know, if you look back to college, everyone's younger. Um, so yeah. I kind of got used to that. It's humbling for sure. But I ask because... I feel like based off of the conversation Benji and I had with mm -hmm. like the cooking and all that, it seems like your guys' apartment living was like a dorm from the yeah. stories that I was kind of getting. So explain to everyone, because obviously y'all practice together, you have games together, all of that, but then you go home and most of y'all are living together, right? Yeah. So all the apartments, I think there was maybe 12, 12 guys from the team that live together. So basically all the guys that didn't have a girlfriend or they don't live together, um, mm -hmm. they were all put in these apartments here. So that's why I kind of had that college feeling too. You know, I would think everyone would go home and to their own apartment, mm -hmm. but you come back and you still see all the guys that you saw just an, an hour early in practice. So uh, it's kind of a dorm feeling ish, even though it's, you know, it's a little bigger obviously than, than freshman dorms, but it kind of has the mm -hmm. same feeling. And then over lockdown too, you know, me, Benji, Dabo, Stadi, you know, all the guys that Benji kind of went home for a while, but all the guys that couldn't go home with, uh, you know, because we couldn't go to Europe with COVID at the mm -hmm. time, there was travel restrictions. We all stayed here and, you know, it was kind of like, you know, you're back in college, you're just hanging out all day. <laughs> just, I always called it college without school, but, uh, you know, you just Love hang that. out and you go play soccer, but you don't have any class anymore. That sounds so fun. And I wish as staff members, like we got to see that behind the scenes, but obviously we can't in COVID. We definitely couldn't. Yeah. Um, but Benji, I told you I'm not going to talk about food a lot, but I just want to know your take on this. So Benji claimed that when y'all wanted steak, DLC 
would be in charge of making the steak. And he was like, everyone else would help out, but I mean, it was mainly DLC. So like, did y'all cook at all? Or was it all on the 19 year old to cook everyone's uh, food? Look, to put the record straight, I'm still the best chef in the house, you know? So I think everyone knows that. Maybe it was, <laughs> it's not really sad. But. So over lockdown, we had kind of this routine where we had three players here and one day it would study that get cooked for us, then mm-hmm. Mo would cook for us, then I would cook for all of us. So it was kind of like a, you know, day by day routine. Um, but then we found out that DLC was really good in cooking steak. So... <laughs> Then we kind of, you know, put a little bit of pressure on the young kids, you know, like every week we were like, come on, DLC, let's make a steak. We would go f- buy it and then he would just uh, make it. But it's really good. So you got to give credit to, to DLC. I think he, uh, I don't think I can make a steak like he does, but uh, it was, it was it's fun. You know, you have a lot of funny stories to talk about then. What is the best thing you can make? Because I can cook, but I live by myself and I don't really ever have people over with COVID. So I barely cook and I will not brag about my skills because they are not there. But for you, (laughs) what's like, if you had the pressure on you to cook for somebody, what would you make? Uh, Like, I'm not no Gordon Ramsay, but, you know, I think I can make a pretty good, uh, like, spicy shrimp cream sauce, you know, um, with some spinach, mushrooms, some some peppers. Uh, I think that's kind of my speciality. If I have to really have to have a go-to, that's the one. There you go. That sounds bomb. The one thing I can make that I actually enjoy making is like a spicy shrimp pasta. So that sounds right up my alley. But (laughs) and then other question that we were debating about McDonald's for breakfast. Yes or no? Uh, no, no. Uh, It's not bad, but I never eat it. Let's put it that way. You know, if it's the only thing that's there, I'll eat it. But it's if I had the choice, I, I wouldn't I wouldn't pick the McDonald's one. All right, it's all you like healthy soccer players. And I'm like, yeah, Egg McMuffin, let's go. But anyways, back to soccer. So you had the amazing experience of your first season as a pro being coached by Ian Russell, who as everybody who follows soccer knows he played with Landon Donovan. He's had players go to MLS, I think every year. How special and important for you was it to have Ian as your first head coach in the pros? It was great. I mean, I kind of came to Reno um, last minute because I, I came from LAFC. So I, I didn't really have that much knowledge about Reno and, you know, who was the coaching staff um, at the time. Um, but kind of the first minute that I, I got to Reno, I, I got a good feeling. You know, you can, you know, just by training, being around them, that they're very capable. Um, you know, you, you grow a lot as a player, not just on the field, you know, but also the, the mental aspect, you know, being ready for when you have to be ready. Um, and it's always easier to have a train or a coach that, you know, accomplished a lot in his playing career. So, you know, he, he talks about experience and he knows how it is. He knows how it is to play himself. So he gives a lot of, you know, good tips and helps you forward in, in your first year as a pro. That's awesome. And then for you, you were, I think, mainly a sub. Um, but you came in in some really high pressure situations. I know um, like the Phoenix match and just other, the Sacramento match, I think was your debut with Mm -hmm. us. So for you, um, what were those biggest lessons that you learned coming in, knowing that the coaches are trusting you to try to make a difference um, mid-match? I mean, it's all about, you know, confidence, having confidence in yourself, knowing your um, abilities and not really uh, dying the minutes that you play with, you know, maybe what the coaches think that you can do because, (laughs) Uh, I think that's a good thing that Ian and, and, and Chris also have is, you know, they they put the trust in you um, and it's more about being ready when you have to be ready. Um, you know, you come in in a team that accomplished a lot in the last couple of years. So, you know, it's going to be fighting for minutes and you're not going to start everything, you know, other than in college. You know, it's it's a, it's a switch from playing everything in college then coming to the pros and, you know, everyone is, is good. You know, it's not like mm-hmm. that. Um, it's that easy anymore to, to start every game. Um, but I think that's a part of, of being a pro, I guess, um, you know, being ready for, for when every coach needs you and stepping up. Uh, and I think, I, I, think I, I did that this year and we're building on that for, for next season. I can second that. I know I was on the field doing ref security most um, of the second half of the season matches. Mm-hmm. But I know every time you were in, you made a difference. Like, you're super fast. And <laughs> I just loved watching you play. So there were matches where – maybe like it was really tight or like close or whatever 
And I'm just like looking over at the bench and I'm like, so are they going to put Boo in yet? Just like waiting. <laughs> but it was awesome to watch you play. And with that, I know now the future is a little uncertain, but what are your goals kind of in this off season moving into 2021? And then where do you see your career going as well? Well, obviously, um, first, my, my main goal is to, uh, to become a full starter um, in the league. And then once that happens, you know, showing what I can do and making the next step again, even if that's going back to, to MLS with a couple of year, within a couple of years, or is that going back to, to Europe or, or somewhere else, um, you know, that they'll take care of itself then with the years. But I don't like to put too many goals in the long term. I like kind of like I have to make short-term goals and, you know, achieving those and then with achieving those short-term goals, eventually um, those long-term goals are going to take care of themselves. So first being a full starter in the league, mm -hmm. um, having a consistent good year and then, then making a step forward from, from there. Well, I know you got a lot of exposure this year. I know Ian obviously has a ton of connections, so hopefully you land somewhere soon. But mm -hmm. I asked Benji the same thing. I'm going to put you on the spotlight to kind of like hype yourself up a little bit. Okay. For people watching this, what is special about Eunice Budati? Like, why should somebody sign you? What makes you stand out as a player? Um, my uh, production in the final third, I guess, as a defender. Um, I've always been known to having a lot of assists, um, you know, running up and down the field. So I think that's my, my biggest um, upside in my game. Love it. Actually, one more thing, but there were so many amazing moments this season. I know it was a crazy season where fans couldn't really come in till the very end, the break with COVID, all of that. But do you still have a favorite moment? Maybe you were in the game. Maybe it was not even part of a game, but what was your favorite moment from Reno 2020? Uh, personally, I'd say the Portland game. You know, I've been, I was waiting for a long time to, you know, get my first start and, um, you know, I was eager to get on the field. So I think that was my personal favorite moment. Um, you know, getting that game and getting a win and getting to assist. You know, it was, a, it, was a, it was a great weekend for me personally. And then as a team, I guess the first game against SAC, you know, having their uncertainty of not playing the whole year. Mm -hmm. And then uh, even though we didn't win that game, it was just great to be, you know, make my debut and have the team back and traveling. And, you know, that's what it's all about, I guess. Uh, so, yeah, I think that was kind of the highlight, you know, being 100% sure that the season is coming back and it finally kicking off again. Uh, so, so, yeah, I think that was the best moment. Awesome. Well, I think I was just as relieved as you when the season came back because I was a little worried I was not going to have a job for 2020. So to have y'all <laughs> back and to actually like work matches was amazing. Well, Eunice, where can people follow you on social media and keep up with you and your career? Um, Mostly on Twitter and Instagram. That's where I'm most active. Um, on Instagram, is just my first and last name, Yunus Budadi. And then Twitter is YBudadi underscore two. Um, so yeah, those are the two that I'm most active on. So if anyone wants to follow, go ahead. Shameless plug. <laughs> <laughs> hey, I'm about it. Well, thank you so much for joining me. Um, I wish we still had another season that I could watch you play. But good luck going forward, and uh, I look forward to keeping up with your career. Appreciate it, Courtney. I'm sure we'll see each other around.